Apart from buff, um, what would you do? What would you add in? Um, Some uh, sort of spinny blade that he can throw away he's, and he's collect on another part of the map. No, he's the lava of my game, so... <laughs> That's a League of Legends <laughs> reference. I know that one. <laughs> you can't no. pull that one over on me, Paul. You can't change I'm eSports aware. Uh, Sorry, Black. No, it's all right. But I'm just saying you can't change him. Changing him means changing me. But I want to stay the same. <laughs> wow. Are you asking Ice Frog to change you? you <laughs> don't change me. Rework. Don't rework. change me. Uh, Dominic. I, I, Ice Frog, if you're watching, um, please, can you don't can it. you rework Black? Thank you. We, we've we've put in a request. Make him a better That's all analyst. We can do. It's like Santa Claus, right? You put in the letter. You never know whether you're quite going to get what you asked for, but we try every year. Okay, different question. If you could rework me. <laughs> yes, I've I'd got make, it. I'd I've make got you it. Shorter. I would buff your predictions. That's what I would hey. be doing. Because then at least one of us would be right on this panel. Ah, uh, okay. Let's get you into the draft for game number three. Another ogre. Another ogre and another undying. They've gone back to game one's um, fairly inactive, in ineffective band. undying, frankly. Yeah. But gyro band. So undying gyro found band. out. Yes. Mm. Razor in. Yes. Mm. But razor without omni. Omni. No. Mm. Razor. Without an Omni in the enemy team? No. Yeah. There's also the whole Omni Rubik thing that often seems to happen between Chinese teams. And then usually the Omni wins anyway. No, because Rubik's the better Omni. Yeah, but it's just a meme. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> just a meme. <laughs> just a meme. What are you on about? It's a ranged better Omni. Yeah, then Ogre is the better Undying. But then Jakiro's the better two-headed thing. But, How but, did but, you manage to work Jakiro into that? But, but not if you have Phoenix in Winter Wave Room. <laughs> oh. you, know me, you know me, Cap. Anyway, we can get the uh, the dragon in. We'll do it. But yeah, newbie, same bands. Ogre mm. first pick again. Man, Faith is having a great time in the grand final. He's having it easy out there, yeah. isn't he? Ogre, but, you but say? You want me to do Ogre again? You know, wow. PL Hello? second pick is Whoa. interesting. Yeah. The, the, the hero Whoa. has so many counters in the game. He really does. How does he just second pick this hero? Well, is it Newbie's turn to... Oh, oh my god. So Black, we're gonna... Why? Dude, Black, I can tell what's gonna happen already. We're gonna... The PL's gonna get countered, and we're gonna be like, We like Vici Gaming Strat. This one's better. <laughs> then we're gonna predict him. 3-0 in the finals. 0-3 analysts. Roll the credits. Yeah, so, something yeah, like great stuff. solo kills the PL. <laughs> we're like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> So the Hubert Artis win, the probably hardest counter to PL, on the carry lane at least. I'm still a bit surprised by the PL. Mm. Did, uh, did, you, did you not think they might have gone for this win, in that, since they've gone for the Quop? Sven and Quop is quite strong together. Yeah. Sven, uh, Quop can make a lot of space for the Sven to farm up, as well as the Undying. I I'm just not so sure that Nubi would necessarily have thought of banning the Quop in Phase 2. I, I mean, I think you're just happy with having the Quap because Newbie yeah. might be able to pick yeah. it up as well. Block pick as well. That's yeah. true, yeah. yeah. And it's quite okay against PL. Yeah, <laughs> very once, strong AoE. Well, once you get the spell life that you can actually combat him with the Mjolnir. You can even get the uh, level 25 fear. Yeah. And then scare the oh. Phantom Lancer out of his mm. illusions. Or, That's the real mm. one. AoE Shadow Strike. 650. Oh, <laughs> no, that's a meme right there. <laughs> this panel has gone right that's down the here with this third segment. I don't know the why does he why does he even have that talent? I don't know. I've never seen it being useful. Just the meme. Icefrog at valvesoftware.com. There's the other uh, big AOE battle fury type hero. Yeah, counters illusions. Now we see SCC uh. drinking his water, staying hydrated, thinking. Important. Yeah. This could be a good void game for Vici Gaming. Well, I think I know the plan. Mm -hmm. Newbie, second pick, PL. So they go all in on countering the PL, and then they last pick S Triple C's hero, and he owns them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's going to get a last pick Storm Spirit? Something like that. Yeah. They've already got the KP Puck. Yeah, definitely KP Puck. Good S Triple C can hero. play it, but it's not really their style to put up. Here, like punk mid lane. It's good versus Quap, and I think it's a nice team fighting hero versus the Undying as well. Yep, agreed. Undying's very reliant on being able to, as the fight is initiated on, throw down that tombstone and stuff, and the silence can be super disruptive for him. What are we looking for for me? It's definitely. They don't play offline Quap, right? It's mid Quap. Most likely. Yeah. 
Yeah, Most offlane, likely. The yeah, offlane co-op seems kind of weak again. And I'm not sure if that's yeah. really 11 style. Yeah, he's more like the tanky, beefy kind of guy. Get in your face. Oh, hey, speaking of 11 hero. Uh-huh. Yeah. Legion Commander! Yeah, against PL. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's finally a Legion game. There's not too many of those right now. No. Wait, it's really yes, good against PL and okay. Ogre. Hmm? It's really good against PL and Ogre. You can purge off the Ignite Spirit Breaker. Hmm, yeah. Spirit Breaker. It oh. doesn't strike me as amazing against the lineup, but it's just no. like a... You run in first, make space kind of hero. You can never really go wrong with the Spirit Breaker, honestly. <laughs> but speaking of meme talents... I've got the meme counter from VG Game against a PL. Ready? Doom. Doom. 100% clean, clean, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I mean, is, uh, you know, I was praising Ice Frog so I can do this. What the hell are you thinking? 100% cleave. 100% We're cleave. just trying to balance. 100% cleave uh, on a single target hero. Mr. Ice Frog, I, I do apologize for my friend's uh, rudeness. We're just trying to balance things up. <laughs> Please invite me back to TI. <laughs> Please, please, five ice frog. It wasn't a good year. You might have just ruined your career. <laughs> what? You might have just ruined your career. I mean, just me, I probably. I mean, I yeah, must have, have already careful, done man. that last I, year. I'm just gonna say that's the time a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> the moment wins with the coaching, huh? Thinking, yeah. So the last pick, S Triple C is coming in. Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, the more fling instead. More fling. You now get the um the waveform that gets Attacks an attack target. in, yeah, yeah. so uh, you're actually in a weird way better against PL than you and used to be. Mjolnir, you wave over 10 illusions. <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, like the tree branch and stuff like that, since it's a cleave attack. Yeah. You just explode things when you waveform over them. There's no tiny dome. Um, but, but back it, in the day, like, Phantom Monster was very good versus the Morphling because you would pick up the Fusal Blade, you were, like, you would help burn out the, yeah. the Morphling's mana. Well, but it kind of went both ways, too. Mm -hmm. After after the Fusal didn't destroy illusions anymore, you yeah. would just make a replicate of the PL and you get your own illusion army. Yeah. But it doesn't work anymore either. Like and it doesn't it, have it. And it's such a storied history, I guess, between yeah. these two heroes, and, and now and it's going to continue. And on top, there was like a trio that always fought each other. Yeah. The three hard carries in late game. So, VG could still go for the tiny last pick if they wanted to. But then we would have an offlane tiny, and nobody wants to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. It's pretty bad. Like, zero armor, the... Ogre hits you for like 80. So, what are the offlaners that are left for you? Well, Beast is banned. Yeah, and there's no Bat Rider Bat either. Is banned. No Tide. Tide is banned. Magnus? Um, is no. Quite not, bad with the lineup. Not with your lineup. Yeah. You don't really have any cleaver. The mech. I mean, it's super slow. There's yeah. Void offlane. Nyx is, there's got to be better heroes. Nyx, Nyx is bad. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not good either. Yeah, it's just it's kind of okay. You know, it's kind of awkward it's when Earth you have like... Shaker can work, yeah. Shaker. Bru is banned. Dude, it? no one's picking off lane Shaker, but again, there's the Legion Commander. Yeah, LC is quite good. I think Legion is... The, the problem is when you last pick your offlaner and there's no good offlaner left, then it's kind of like a wasted last the, pick. The Bruce yeah. did I... Bruce, all right. I think he's just kind of okay here. You can yeah. dispel the Illusions, I guess. You can dispel the Sandstorm. The Bloodlust. Took out the Bloodlust. <laughs> Nature's Prophet. I don't, I don't feel like there's like one no. best choice right now. It will just like no. depend on what way they want to go. Yeah, I think it's the Darkseer. What? Mm. It's like the one none offlaner we didn't us. say. Yeah, none of us had that one. But it, I, okay, that so was, they've uh, got the That was Spirit offlane breaker. lottery and no one won. Well, it makes sense with the Undying and SB, they'll just run at you with an Iron Shell. Yeah. And it hurts a lot. But they don't really have a combo, right? It's like charge into vacuum, I guess. Ooh. Yeah, they don't have uh, one of those team fight Ooh. combinations. Damn. Oh, we can't, we can't be like spice in that Vichy room right now. He is now. hyping them up. He is. He's telling them, three, don't two. get 3 would 3 2 right now, baby. There we go then. Oh, so they pick up the called music. it. I mean, you called it. On the wrong team, but... Yeah, <laughs> no, we'll, I called we'll, it. You we'll guys misheard. It. I, I said yeah, newbie. No, no, clearly, I, I, I said I'm, newbie. I'm pretty I sure said, clearly yeah. said KP yeah. Legion Commander would be excellent. And I said... They would never run the park mid because it's not their style. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. 
You guys are on fire oh, today. We're you the really best, are. Black. You are so good at this. All right, so. Yes. All yours. Cap. Yeah, Cap, go first. All Cap, yours. tell um, us how this is going to play out. Okay, so newbie have the Legion Commander. Why did they pick that? They're picking up against the dual, Morphling. Well, you can duel the Morph and you can't Morph, I guess. It's quite good. You know what? I'm, I'm going to stick... Uh, I'm going to... I'm sticking with my rule of... Like, remember I said, when I don't go for the faster-paced team, I always end up regretting it. I'm going to go newbie this time. Okay. Black. Hello. Are you going to stick with your heart, Black? <laughs> what heart? <laughs> uh, whatever, VG. Because... Docs here. Spirit Breaker owns me in pups every time. All right. Some um, analytical pub stuff going on here on the uh, panel for a change. Uh, they are split this time around. At least they can't curse both teams. <laughs> well, let's at least hope not. As we head into game number three, remember, Vici are on the rack. Nubi need just this one to claim the title. I think it's very possible for both Black and Cap to curse both teams. But if they do... I'm hoping it's going to be Cap's side of the fence for the curse. Because I would like to see a game four out of this. I'd like to see VG Gaming actually step up to the mark. You had doubts, however, Malini. About you had strat. doubts looking at the draft. Eh, it's a little dubious, but passable. <laughs> dubious, but passable. That's not really what you want to hear when you're two games down in a grand final against the TI finalists. Maybe not winners, but finalists. So... The LC duel you can't actually morph out of if you're not morphing before, which is actually pretty interesting. That's a very long duration disable that they can have versus the morphing. I didn't actually expect them to pick it up. I didn't. Maybe <laughs> I would see it versus the PL, but not on PL side. But maybe it is a counter to morph. I do like how Newbie have been going with options that is, is they, this, they seem ahead of the curve. Is this like how like the ET was played two days ago? It's like, oh man, this is a this is a really good counter to the Tide Hunter. Newbie are working out like what's going to wreck the morph. It seems that way, but if, if it happens, it you happens. still have a couple of problems to kill. Uh, do you have actually that many problems to kill off the Tombstone? No. When you got PL PL's on the really field. good at killing the Tombstone. Hmm. You know, you know the answer to that? The, the, the Haishika? It means still lagging. Still lagging? I know Kale, which is... Haishika means still, still lagging. I'm learning bit by bit Chinese. Bit by bit. I only know a little bit, but enough to translate that. <laughs> get on it, Ben. Get on it. What is with that Morphling? I, I, I always love it when you get the animation bugs on him. Like, I'm actually clicking on the Morphling right now, and, like, his items... I think we actually had it here. The items are halfway behind him. <laughs> Can't even get... Just slips right off the back. Hmm. They got these weird animations, too, on the items in China. SCCC, I think, is actually one of the biggest culprits of He's got, like, this... This triple, this triple ring around the bottom of him. Oh, that looks better. Like the items back on Paparazzi now. He's fighting, man. Put the Dukes up. Can we call Paparazzi the Duke? Call him whatever you like, Toby. I don't think I can. <laughs> I really don't think I can. I don't have that kind of permission. I'll give you the power. Thank you, Malini. I've I've been gifted permission by the by the police, so I'm good to go. You have my A, okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. You have to bribe me though. But it's just, just, we're in China. I know what's going on. <laughs> Let's get the docks here back into this game so we can actually continue on our path. So it looks like uh, VG Gaming going to put Paparazzi up on the top lane. So we're actually running pretty standard lanes for, v, uh, for VG. Nothing unusual there. Uh, you were actually mentioning that you thought KP could actually go to the safe lane, but PL instead is running safe against the Darks here. Is this when newbie should be looking to change their lanes up? TP, I mean, TP the Legion to the bottom, or is, is this required against the Darksy? Like, who lanes better against Darksy? Well, definitely LC, but I think you may, you might want the LC to pressure the morph a little bit more. The supports on Vici are the double melee, the dreaded double melee, although with the, with a Darksy, I would say it's much, much better, but it's likely going to be Spear Breaker plus Darksy on the bottom lane. PL is going to have a really tough time, and Ogre is beefy, but two heads cannot beat two heroes. Yep. Especially when those heroes have Iron Shell buff-ups. That's gonna uh, be that's gonna be a lot of continuous burn. Ion shell is so expensive though, man. It what? Yeah. Especially when you want to commit it into the lane, but it does keep him low. Like you'll keep either PL or Legion low. They're both, you're running. It's a two melee core, and it's not like you're gonna push the puck off the mid lane. 
Like, that's SDCC. Darkstar is actually interesting because I thought... Well, Diffusal got nerfed, so it doesn't dispel anymore. And Diffusal destroys Darkseer. And maybe teams have been thinking about heroes that got destroyed by Diffusal, but not destroyed anymore. Maybe Darkseer is the hero. Maybe you mm -hmm. can't, you can't. Now you have to like Yule's him or coil him or duel him or something to get him away instead of just, oh, he Diffusal, I'll Diffusal your Ion Shell, then Diffusal your Surge. You know, he doesn't get absolutely ruined by that anymore. That's Maybe you also cool. look at it from the other angle of, like, VG game, you just want to have heroes who are, one, hard to kill on the lane. Morphling and Darkseer are not the easiest if you play the lanes right. Uh, and we've had a very, very passive early game in both of our games so far in this grand final. Now you've got the rotation harass, which can come from, like, an Iron Shelled up Spirit Breaker. Uh, but everyone else can just sit very comfortably back in their lane to continuously farm up until they're ready to go. And Nubi appears to have given them that space as well, with Legion, who won't fight until she's got six. Uh, Puck, who has got some damage, but it's all about outplaying in the mid. And then the PL, who doesn't want to fight until you have Diffuse, before you have, like, these earlier items. So is this actually just VG Gaming? Well, they're actually going to try and... Okay, well, you know how I said that could just be a little bit more passive? They really want to fight this one. Kaka with a double fire strike and overwhelming odds boost up here from KP. Gives them that damage. And Young Eleven will fall. And their laning phase was meant to be a little bit safer. The SEC ex will now take this rune. I think they actually wanted either the Quap or the Dark Seer to skill something pretty subpar at level 1. Either blink on the uh, Queen of Pain, which he didn't, and then the Surge on the Dark Seer, which he didn't, but he also died. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a nice start. You don't really need your Legion down there if you already got first blood. Yep. KP's running back up to the top lane. He's holding his TP scroll in case they do need to switch the lanes up. Young Eleven actually got rid of the aggressive Observer Ward. So during that fight, Newbie actually put an Observer Ward on top of the hill. So he sentried and got rid of that. So not too bad when he's sitting at half a level now. And, if, and can start to add that pressure to bottom lane. Makes that uh, sentry ward pay off instantly. And now that it's slightly easier to kill. Actually going again up on top lane. <laughs> Kaka's thinking about it. SB's charging all the way up from the low side, but with the Barra Strike forward, they're baiting Kaka into this fight. KP still only has overwhelming odds, and it's on cooldown for three more seconds. Kaka getting hit with the waveform forward. Kaka will fall. Paparazzi will come back in range of the wave, but a level one overwhelming odds does a lot of damage, but okay, maybe with the movement speed, no. Paparazzi will drop low. He'll burn his south now, and come back up to full life. And Kaka wants to go once more, but it's more playing with Fenrir. KP's got nothing to help break him free, Kaka, with that, like, press the attack or anything along those lines. And Young Eleven, also problematic for him. But Phantom Rush is on cooldown, no Lance, and they're not going to burn the Fire Blast. Interesting choice of the Fire Blast over there, Ignite. Ignite does more damage, but you know, maybe trying to get rid of some of his surge timing or to stop a TP potentially coming out from Eleven. Eleven doing a very good job of leeching, but... Don't know if he's going to get scattered out by Ogre. Ooh. Nukes it perfectly. Some will be there and he'll instantly cancel the clarity. Still Better got another two to work more. with. And Ogre doesn't have any clarities. So. Mid lane's pretty even as far as the CS goes. This is Young Eleven just battling for the for the rune. Okay, stun him to take the rune. That'll work. Wait, is he going to go for the second? He's got a lot of life on Faith. He can potentially do this, but he won't, he won't follow through any further. There's a uh, haste rune that Kaka is currently sitting on. Fenrir is nearby. So scattered out. Kaka will look for some extra chip damage into Fenrir. Top lane can still take a hell of a lot of harassment, but this is just more... Actually, Kaka's got... With the caustic finale, he does harass Fenrir away. SCCC was not in a position to really move up there. He'd have to walk up that cliff to do so. In which case, Quap would almost certainly get a Shadow Strike off. She actually went for a 0-1-2 build. On the Quap, is one where you're just not confident in getting off your Shadow Strike. No. Charge is coming forward towards Kaka. He's already been aggressive on the top lane, and Spirit Breaker pulls out the charge. Nice observe what's been left behind by Newbie. Able to scout out a lot of the movements of VG Gaming with their supports rotating in. You get a, a last minute little check. <laughs> okay, low for Ori, but he's fine. Blink is still available. But no cell. Uh, just flew in? No. Nope. Actually, yeah, it's in his stash. It didn't come on the courier for him. Yep. SCC should... It, I mean, he can win the lane for next, like, I would say 30 seconds to a minute Ooh. after that. Oh, goodbye, Darkseer. He thought he was away. 
but Mugi will take the kill. Kaka being charged up on top. The overwhelming odds. That's a lot of damage. Kaka still has the virus strike available. Will go through too. They want to kill on Paparazzi. KP doesn't really have much more to fight with. And once again, Kaka is the primary tag target. But the damage. Oh, there it is. The decay. It reaches from Lanham. Meanwhile, KP tracks down Fenrir. So a one for one trade off on that top lane. Important that 11 still stays down here. You don't want it jungle. Jungling in general is just not good this patch, but especially so I think when you're at Dark Silver's double melee, there's really no, even if you're dying, I still think you stay down there just to make sure that you limit the PL's farm. No one's really free farming yet in this game. There's just been a lot of pressure coming out from uh, every which way. Like there's a lot of CS on the Morphling. Not many denies, which just shows you like obviously his priority in the lane. That's the only thing which PL has over him. Like the CS is similar, but the denies are double. Same for the mid lane. Puck with the 12 denies to the seven of Ori. Puck should win this lane pretty handily though. But I think Ori's going for more, oh, far more into build. Scream, SCC. Damn, he's so quick with that. Just phase shifts it out. Doesn't have an orb available. He didn't phase shift it out. He got rain. He rain it dropped. Rain it. Okay. Yeah. It looked like he actually did it just because like there was no damage at all from the scream. I think that's why you want that build. The bl you just blink scream instantly so that they don't have time to react. With shadow strike, the projectile speed is just way too slow. So you want to be able to blink in range and get that instant cast off on the scream of pain. It's. I mean, it's. It's decent, but it's not going to be able to kill the puck. It's just harassment. Oh, Lanham, I think, is dead. The Observer one lets them set up perfectly for it. The overwhelming odds will work with the creep wave. And then even an Ignite, Faith has moved up to the top lane to fight this. And from Paparazzi thought before he was able to get a simple 1-1 trade off, the numbers are just in favor of Nubi on the north. Yep. By Fenrir, that is not where you want to go. He does have his own Observer ward down there at least, but that's it. By far the weakest part of Morph's game is his early laning phase. It is just tremendously poor, especially versus any like half decent off laner. Oh, silence in mid. Faith gonna land the stun. Faith shifting out. The charge coming in from Fenrir. Ori is low. SCCC, however, cannot keep that pressure going underneath the tower. Ignite will help do it. Keeping him low and stopping him from bottle charging up. The old Fenrir will dodge. And everything's okay for both sides. Half maybe Barra Strike up on top, but KP doesn't have dual available just yet on Paparazzi. Paparazzi has already had to use two cells, and he's almost out of his last set of tangos. And then there's just this constant chicken usage coming out from them too. And Morphling does not have enough money for a ring of health too, so he's actually going to lack in the sustain department. I guess they still do have that shrine up top, but you have to be worried that the LC is going to stick it up there in lane, especially with this three-man shrine coming out. I approve of this efficiency. They can just get back and farm beautifully. SCCC, pressure in towards the mid. Nice bottle. Uh, Rune could be a haste for Ori. So his movement can finally come out. He's not level 6 just yet, however. So that's the problem for top lane. Here comes Kaka, waveform. He doesn't go for the virus strike out of the tower. They needed to hit Paparazzi before that happened. Even so, it's not a kill. They're just trying to harass him out. They know he's out of region and they know he has the belt of strain. There's the SP charge first. going after Mugi. Oh, it's just too easy to dodge. When you got that doppelganger, so many illusions. Which one's the real one? Fates had time, TP in, Sonic Wave and Scream connects onto Mugi. Ori making the quop work. Henry, however, is caught on the wrong side of the tracks, but he's got charge available. Yeah, this mass screen build might actually be pre preferable to early ganking in PL2. You can just doppelganger off the Shadow Strike. So. This way you can identify the real PL very, very quickly. Kaka, fire strike again on top. Decay's making it difficult for Nubi to keep the pressure up. But also good pressure from SECC. You saw the fortification burn for a second there. It's because uh, Puck was pushing in that mid-tower. So even with the rotation off the Queen of Pain, number one net worth is no longer the Morphling. It's actually Puck. Moved up to 3.2k. Got the treads coming, well, sometime on the courier, and they're going to be building into a blink dagger, but it's the rotation north. Kaka and KP already here. Fenrir is trying to wrap around the back. Charges forward. Kaka has a bar of strike. He needs to create some space with it. Looking to get both Fenrir and Paparazzi. Can't get him just yet. Already KP is down for the dream call. It catches four heroes, but they don't have enough follow up for this. Maybe Kaka with this level one sandstorm. No, he doesn't. Needs the bar of strike. The stun and the damage from it is that SECC has to orb away. The bar of strike will catch out too. So VG, they do bring four heroes towards the top. So a lot of rotation for it, but they get the Legion Commander for it, which is more than worth it. Legion for SP. Not sure if it's worth it. They didn't have as many heroes up there. Ogre wasn't wasn't up there at the time, and 
Uh, in the meantime, we still have Rugi free farming on the bottom lane. So, is this something they should be a little bit more adamant to try and stop? To slow down this Diffuser Blade of Boogie? I don't really think they can stop it. What, what do you do? Maybe bring like Darkseer plus one down there? Then your Morphin just gets absolutely like manhandled up top. So, SCCHC has a really good face shift. He also face shifted the Shadow Strike up there too. Just mm -hmm. you know, perfect timing on those. He's doing it with level one. Yep. Kind of why you want the Puck versus the Spear Breaker, or Puck mid lane versus Spear Breaker. Other mid heroes are just going to get destroyed by the Spear Breaker plus Queen of Pain combo. One of the most aggressive lanes that you'll see in the game. Pop Ross is number one in that one, though. They are fending off this aggression quite well. Maybe with a level six, though, on the Legion Commander, they can potentially go for a kill. Yep. Thanks to this Observer Ward that's just on the other side of the trees for the Dire side. BG know there's a gank coming, a release around from Newbie, from Faith as well as KP. What they don't know is the smoke gank from SCCC and Kaka. A creep gets pulled down, reveals the fact that Vision will be there. Dream Call is available. They really want Pepperazzi, but more importantly too, they want to start these kills coming in on KP with Duel. They want to increase his damage output, and they're going to give it a shot. Into Lanham, he'll put the Tombstone down. KP, who do you want to go on? He starts with the overwhelming odds. Nice double bar strike, and Newbie looks like they don't really want this. SB's charging through the middle of absolutely everyone. Faith, he wants to stop him, but gets reeled back by the charge forward. Now, Faith caught the wrong size. You can come back in for another re -orb. Nope, it's just going to be harassment. Five heroes are up here on the top lane for Vici Gaming. Is this a severe overreaction for an ogre? Not really. I mean, two of the heroes were smoked, and then two of the heroes were showing in lane, so it's, it's four people up there committing. Kaka, bar a strike. Duel, remember, is still available. Difficult when you've got a soul ripping undying behind. And you, I mean, Paparazzi will go off in the Morphling if he is given enough farm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're securing that game plan quite nicely. They're going to lose the tier one tower on bottom. Moogie's getting so much space. Like, just sitting down there, got a quill of the treads ready. Yeah, he's a happy camper. He's yep. a happy monkey. Just needs a diffuser blade to work a little bit harder against that tower. He's the edgy buff up. Darkseer is finally coming down, but he's it's... gonna need a lot of HP though. There's a lot of AoE damage that he just can't avoid. You can't avoid Ion Shell. Moogie's being charged. Scream is really hard to Fender avoid. Fenrir is coming in. Not a quick reaction, however. Doppelganger not getting Moogie out. He'll hold it for now. Starts to TP Fenrir. Oh, where's that bash? The back from Young Eleven will be there. Moogie will fall. The tower. Denied up by Morphling as well. Surprised he didn't even try to doppelganger that. Like he didn't see it or he was already looking to go back. Did TSB coming in from the trees? Maybe he just wanted, he thought he could get the last hit on the tower before. Mm. But. That's great for them. Faith now being charged up on top. Undying is the only one defending, but TP will arrive from Darkseer. Young Eleven can iron chill up the creep wave. AP holding his abilities for the moment. Charge connects into Faith. They want to try and back it back up with a decay. A quick overwhelming odds on three. Faith pressing the attack will knock it him out. And now KP using the overwhelming odds buff up. That, that movement speed to disengage. And while this fight's happening up on top, Aparazzi now starts the counter push on bottom into the tier one tower. Fortification will slow him down. They really need this blink puck to make things happen. They're like trying to force these engagements way too hard. He's close 200 gold and, he's and he has it. Legion Commander is also pretty close to this Observer Ward on the top side is paying huge dividends for Vici as... Yeah, they just okay. sentry and get rid of it now. No, nope. charge, connect in from Fenrir into the nether strike. Kaka able to bar a strike and cancel it. A quick surge, but remember Kaka still got Sandstorm and he'll dodge it once more. A quick Observer Ward, that got pinged. That was a little too obvious on the run out. He turns, bar a strike in one second time. KP's moving over, SEC also here. Tombstone will drop. KP is trying to focus on that, but with a dream call and the duel, the pickup too. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. 21-04 on the Legion Commander. The Tombstone mopped up. And we get our first plus 10 of the game into KP. Kaka's looking good. Okay, maybe they can get a revenge kill on bottom. Moogie's hiding behind the tower down here on bot. We'll just try and fight from the trees, but it's the Queen of Pain nearby. There's your first attack, and he waited for it perfectly. Moogie, he's trying to... Actually, he does it! He took it out with the illusion! Kaka will come in! Moogie, the balls of steel! Holds his ground! Now SEC will also arrive! Jumps forward, doesn't get the rift. Ori able to blink himself away! And Moogie 
He's Woo! had some sick jukes this tournament. <laughs> I remember his other one too. He's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna save him with my illusion. He wants this kill. There's one charge. Just turn for the fire strike. Fenrir is coming in with the waveform. May not matter when SCC gets a triple silence, but no Lanham's here to give the heal with the soul rim. Now SCC, he needs to draw. Able to do so. The he's bash had, just not cancel him for long enough. He's had severe mana issues on Pug. He did not have enough mana twice. Let's see that, that again. <laughs> the one that goes west, everybody. He even misses the Sonic Wave. It was right on top of him. Sick. <laughs> That's brutal. Savage. Red. T1 Town now going to fall. Paparazzi will claim that. So even if they don't get the kill, on Tamugi, that's more money into Paparazzi now, full thousand-ish gold away uh, in front of the puck as far as net worth goes. He is going to go for the Lincoln Sphere. Is this just going to be the standard, like we go E-Blade Pop? Is that the way to do this when you got a lot of yep. Dispel as well? Why not? What else would you get? Manta, BKB... Uh, Maybe yeah, Manta to break free of the silence. way better. Mm. Oh, Paparazzi's nearby. It's a smoke gang from Newbie. They want to initiate. KP's got Blink Dagger. And here you go. Blink, silence. It's time to duel. But they need a little bit more damage to get the kill before the duel wears off. And they don't do that, but it kills a kill. Well, he felt a little bit safe because of that observer ward. Uh, a little bit to the left of that south shrine. But not safe enough. Probably felt pretty safe too when you had a morphling just like <laughs> walking down the bot lane. Before he TP'd out. Elsie's gonna need a lot more items though to deal with this Lincoln Sphere and just to deal more damage in general. Mm -hmm. The problem with Blink is that you often don't have enough damage to secure the kill. Uh, especially because Puck didn't go for a Veil first build. So they're actually lacking a little bit on damage. You want you want Blade Mail on LC, you want a Halberd to proc Lincolns, you probably need BKB because Morph's gonna have shotgun because he's having a pretty good game so far. Yep. So it depends on how well they can make these two Blink Daggers cock up. Charge and kill. Getting that extra bash in with Nether Strike. Fenry able to ensure the control. And 11 got the kill too, so spreading it three way. Nice. KP, well, there's your bonus set. Like attack speed. So, one big furry dragon. AP's looks even more glorious. Pop has a lot of HP. 1500 HP with the Veil Armor and the Raindrops. The plus 10 strength talent kicking in. Yep. She is going to need... They're going to need a lot more damage if they want to dual kill her. Especially in a real team fight where there's like Vacuum Wall and a Spear Breaker Charge and Undying Soul Rip. They need PL to be involved in these fights. Or, you know, they can just farm until he gets a lot bigger and just duel other people and just not worry too much about the Queen. I was also interested to see too, like, what Young Eleven was going to build into. KP's being charged, he came underneath the Dire Observer Ward, but Young Eleven was originally looking at a mech, and he's changed his mind towards the Hood. So they're identifying the issue of the magical damage coming in from Newbie. They're going to get a lot of physical, though, coming after the Phantom Master. He's really close to the Fusal Blade, just a couple hundred gold away, so... I don't... I think I would prefer the mech in this situation, but it's... He, he had it to start with right now. He hasn't bought any of it yet, but the pipe of insights in the quick buy. He's got 2.7k gold, so if he like, go, wants to go Blink Dagger, if he wants to go, like... Anything? I think Mech. choice is theirs. And Fantastic then... vision, but the phage just into the duel on the Spirit Breaker. Tombstone will come down, but they cannot get enough damage in, like, in life into him. The damage is enough, so is the Sonic Wave. Return, return kill into KP. TP out from Fate, unsuccessful. Adaptive Strike cancelling off that TP. But everybody else from Newbie is leaving. Kaka also not involved. He was uh, trying to get his Blink Dagger on bottom lane. There's not enough burst on the side of uh, Nibi right now. They need more damage to follow up with the duel. It's just taking way too long to kill targets. That was a Spirit Breaker. That's a mm -hmm. position five that you just want to be able to blow up within maybe one or one and a half seconds, but it but took almost the entire duration of the duel there. Should you have that once like you have like a level two epicenter, like with the Blink Dagger on Kaka, is that then going to be enough in Veil? I think level one plus Veil is good enough. You just need the Blink Dagger so that you can actually just do it really quickly and then move on to the next target, kill the Tombstone, you know, do whatever you need to do. You can't just stand there and just be taking up so much damage because Ion Shell is gonna like in a straight one on one. I think LC would actually lose a lot of these against these melee heroes with Ion Shell. So. Fenrir is charging forward. Barra strikes to dodge getting hit by Fenrir, but then Nether Strike. He was using the Sandstorm to farm up the lane. That's why he had no way out. The badge, Kaka. Well played indeed. Woo. Out to safety. And this will now allow Doobie to be a little bit more aggressive into the mid. Diffuse the blades on Boogie, and that T1 tower is just itching for a killing. 
And that should be his Blink Dagger if they get this tower, but looks like he... Oh yeah, okay. So they just got the tower, now Kaka can head top, get his Blink Dagger, and then they can proceed into a big team fight. This all of Nubia heading top. Once again, we're systematically removing these, these out of tier one towers of VG. And they definitely feel confident enough to fight. Blink Dagger plus the Fusal Blade and Veil. Huge power strike for the, uh, power spike for them. They need to do some damage before Morphling gets more farm. He just picked yep. up his Ghost Scepter, so he's very close to his F Blade. 3,000 gold. That is five minutes that you do not want to wait. Yep. So they look to fight. Blink Dagger on Sand King. A little bit of life is coming in with the Pipe of Insight. Now completed on the Darks here. Paparazzi getting some free time to hit that mid tower, trying to work with Lanham, the Undying in the trees. Ori also sitting in the trees. Tier 1 tower is low, no fortification. So SEC, all he can do is try and deny the tower. Won't happen. Dream Call is out. Support's coming in. Kaka channels the enemies out. The forest strike is nice, but the damage onto the Dark Seer is not enough because the Pine Bolt. But then again, maybe it will be enough when they come in with the overwarming odds. It's a one for one trade off. Faith needs a little bit more, but he's trapped in the river with all of his enemies. Kaka, forest strikes up. 17 one charge available. Gets charged in and will actually die. VG Gaming, they're picking off Newbie one by one by one as that's the order Newbie came into the fight. Where the hell is Moogie? That's it, a good question. I think he should have probably just TP it into the front of the fight. Like, I don't really see them being able to burst him down to start of the fight. They have a puck to back on their epicenter, so... Moogie... He's on top lane at the moment oh, when the fight begins, oh, he, and he TP to the shrine. He missed the TP on the T1 tower. That's what happened. They really needed him for this fight. It just took way too long for them to actually start off the fight. Mm. And still, Legion Commander only sitting at 20 damage. This doesn't really work well for Protect 1 when the other are just staying together as 5. Elsie is just not snowballing the way that she needs to, neither is Puck. And on the meantime, on, in the meantime, you have Quapu, who's actually very close to an Orchid. And that's going to be a problem for most of the heroes. Yeah. PL looks like he's going for Manta style. So. You'll, you'll have the uh, Yule Scepter as well on the Puck before the Queen of Pain is going to finish the full Orchid. Yep. So it's. Like, I, I agree with you, like, you should have the snowballing, but you still look at the net worth. Morphling is ahead. We expect this just because he's very difficult to kill. He is but gonna the next take two over is still game. gonna be newbie. He can just F Blade and just destroy the PL. Or, sorry, destroy the Legion Commander in a duel. And then you can, like, if he Blade Mails, you can just, like, F Blade and wait for him and adapt the strike. And then, uh, while you're invulnerable midair, you have all your projectiles hit, and then you won't take any damage. So, this Blade Mail isn't really even gonna do that much for LC, potentially. If he duels the Morphling, it's gonna be great. It's amazing how much this defensive vision of VG Gaming has paid off. They've had Observer Wards on the uh, southern side of the tree line from the Tier 1 tower on top time and time again, and has seen the newbie rotations to the north every single time, and allowing VG to understand when they want to fight. Right now, their Tier 2 tower's been brought down. Moogie will be in this fight, considering he's the one attacking the tower. Charge forward from Fenrir, Face Shift goes on, Quick Silence follow off, and the Dream Coil, all the night. Decent amount of damage into VG, but not enough to scare him. Young Eleven wants to move in, triggers off his pipe, runs forward, stunned up by fate. He wants to get away into the bloodlust, giving him that movement speed. And the epicenter in through the rear, Kaga can't decide where he wants to go, just wailing the claws into the air. Moogie thinks about this fight, but all he can do is doppelganger away. They've lost KP. VG continue to ravage forward. The tombstone was their friend. Moogie, oh boy! That's not even E-Blade Pop yet, but Pepperanti bringing down Moogie, claiming two out of this fight. Eleven is playing the way that Moogie needs to play. He actually just TP'd in there. He's like, yeah, I don't care. Go on me. You're going to lose the fight. And he literally just w walked at them. <laughs> literally. Normally, you're meant to rush. Like, a PL doesn't walk. He rushes. Yeah, but this is a... Uh... I, I think VG are just completely outplaying them in most of these team fights, whether due to strength in numbers or just uh, aggressive playstyle mm -hmm. and positioning, especially from Fenrir too. I'm very surprised that SCZ has been able to dodge all these uh, all these charges with the positioning that Fenrir has had in the trees. S Blade is up. 22 minutes. Morphling's online. Yep. He has that. At the same time, now you got the Yule Scepter over on Park, so he's got a couple of ways out. You're getting a secondary Yules on the SK. And Blade Mal is rapidly approaching for the Legion Commander, so maybe finally KP could be a harder to kill target, because maybe that's the other part in the fight. It's like Mugi runs in at you, but KP's looking for that wonderful initiation. He's had it multiple times in this series, but in this game, it's only when they 
basically catch VG Gaming with their pants down, but it seems to work. SEC's trying to go for a solo kill over on Young Eleven, gets the silence out. Orbs as well. Dream Call will cancel any kind of TP attempt. That's why Young Eleven's holding on to it for the moment. And SEC's just playing with him. Okay, there goes your Dream Call. But they knew it because Kaka was coming in through the side. And overwhelming numbers will secure Legion Commander now her third duel of the game. Huge kill for them. VG are way stronger as a five-man unit, and Morphling is really good at splitting uh, or splitting up newbie if they decide to try and defend against these uh, pushes. Man, his his plays are hurt so badly. Yep, it's really early in the game right now. You think like who can even dodge this kind of stuff? Now you do have I mean, your timing on press the attack would have to be unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, every single one of their heroes can dodge it, except for Ogre. Fire Strike, Happy Center instantly after. They really want to get this kill on Lanham. And maybe you're going to get it. They're finding freebies of VG Gaming. Obviously, Morphling still doing the split push. And big abilities being committed by Newbie, but they're at least getting back-to-back -back kills for the first time in, in this game. Oh, second, third baby power in this game. But how Incorrect deal, information. How to deal with paparazzi. Yeah. That's a, that's a good question. Wow, Lincoln's and BKB? When he gets BKB, there is absolutely nothing they can do. Versus Peel's not even going to do close enough damage. LC does no way to break the Lincolns during the BKB. And Bloodlust isn't even going to be close enough to amp their physical right clicks to the point where Morphling has to feel even remotely scared. So pretty much just take the fight away from the Morphling. Make sure that he can't run in because his teammates are going to be dead. But I don't know. Why, they're all Why don't Radiant just scan in front of the pit when they have an observer ward down and now actually getting dewatered by VG? They scanned in front of Roshan even though they knew exactly where VG was. Maybe that's what they were looking for. They're looking for the observer ward. KP will get rid of it. Young Eleven as well as Ori. Gonna back and back up. The silence is there. Couple of stick charges won't save him. The Orchid pop is guaranteed, and Dream Call from SDTC was not enough to dissuade them, and they're going in. No Dream Call available, KP is down. Epicenter still on cooldown for the moment, a Barra Strike is causing problems for Lana, who puts out an Observe. Well, that's a little obvious, however. But, charge forward, they're looking for the fight. Fade's gonna get a Mortal Cast up over on the fan rear. Epicenter, it's, well, okay, still on cooldown, one after one. Now it's Newbie who falls. It buys time for the LC, but still doesn't really seem worth it for them. This Orchid, you know, to already used but twice two kills. SEC really wants to speak right on top of an Observer one. He doesn't know. They wait for him up. He'll blink himself away, and they go for the other target. After Faith, it's the supports that VG are hunting, not the hard-to-kill Puck. But with the Sentry Ward down, I think they just caught a glimpse of the OBS. Now SEC's coming back in for it. He'll remove that vision. He's probably <laughs> like, wow, they didn't kill me there. Oh, jump in. Double silence, jaunt away, couple of illusions being sent in. Wow, he's, they successfully stalled with two deaths, the Roche, that's, that's actually worth, I think. Yeah. Surprisingly. You get rid of, like, VG Gaming now also have no vision around the Roche pit. Like, yep. I, I say that they have an Observe War to the north, but because Kaka saw it, that vision is now gone. And there's two Observe Wars being brought down rather quickly. VG's gonna go blind on the map. Yep. Successfully thwarted Roche attempt. I'm actually surprised they didn't go for uh, SCCC there with that Observer Ward. I think they could have, like, maybe, like, blink, screamed, and orchided right when the charge is about to come through, so he can't blink out, nor can he face shift down. But it would have been quick. Like, it, he, he's still got the Yule set to dispel. But you, normally your reaction is to face shift or to blink out. Your normal reaction isn't to Yule right there, just in case you need it later on. So, mm -hmm. if they... Yeah, charge that SP. <laughs> Illusions are burning off Paparazzi's mana. Like he's kind of okay. There, they'll burn, they'll burn the shrine and get his mana back up again. I don't believe in dropping items for mana efficiency. He's got like half mana. That's actually not. That's actually a problem versus the PL because PL is going to burn your mana. Eth Blade plus Waveform plus Depth of Strike plus maybe Strength of Depth of Strike at some point. Yeah, yeah. Waveforming out, you're not going to have mana. So I don't actually know if they take that fight. Well, at least Jump Eleven is. A lot of the offlaners were banned out, so Darkseer, one of the best team fighting offlaners, especially when Omni, Tidehunter, Beastmaster are banned. Yeah, when, when every other hero was banned, yes. You you go for what you can get. He's going to finish up both the Crimson Guard as well as the Pipe, so all about the, the buffed up auras to keep him alive. At the same time, we're seeing SCC building into more damage. He's going for Dagon. 
and has the full five level Dagon lined up. While Quap, as well as Morphling, go more defense items with the BKB will make it more difficult for Nubi to get that pop kill they're looking for. Division battle continues again. Dire Sentry was just out of range of the Radiant Observer Ward. And then Puck gives a close tab on Roshan. The upside of, of Illusion. Uh, of Illusion Orb. Charge, top lane, KP. He needs to help him out pretty quickly here. They're underneath the T1 tower, SEC. Of course he doesn't need any help. KP, waits in the tree line, Flame Miles available, Morphling, Waveform, Ding, Karka, looking for that forest strike, he goes the other direction. Puck is already down, tries to hide in the sandstorm, I say try, succeeds. There's five from there, and they can't pull him out of him until they charge and back. Forest strike, in one second time, the one charge, he burns them, but there's just too much damage from Paparazzi. They find the kill. As KP hides in the trees, Where but was VG the... will now go up. Roshan. He dodged the first... He dodged a Spirit Breaker stun, and the then... Door. It's up on top. The damage out. Punch. It's gonna be enough. Just in time to be a winner. TP out, and the Orchid will pop the Legion Commander. Roshan is still going down. They're using Undying to tank up Roshan. Puck still on the sidelines for the 30 seconds. The Dire Scan to ensure no one's coming up. Without the buyback from Puck, this ain't happening. Okay. okay, well now VG have the stronger team fight because Morphling's massive. They have stronger pick off because Morphling's massive and they have the better late game because Pop and Morphling are both massive. So this I'm, I'm glad uh, you varied it a little bit. It would have been a little bit redundant. They can fight without the Morphling there. If Morphling's off split pushing, that might be your best opportunity to take a fight. But if VG stick mm. together as five, Newbie have very little opportunity the, to It looks like they're just trying to make it harder hard to kill. Like you're getting a heart build up for the PL. If you can complete both Heart as well as Butterfly, maybe VG Gaming don't have enough of no, an answer to Moogie. And we turn him into that that, that late game crazy carry that Morphling can't even deal with if he can't find the real one. Well, I, I think they have plenty of AoE to actually deal with it. Especially if Quaff goes for Mjolnir later. I mean, the waveform attacks all targets is actually pretty significant for a Morphling to spat. You're going to be doing like 500 damage to all the illusions, and then you have the Blink Scream, and then you have Ion Shell, you have Vacuum, you have Sonic Wave, you have Spirit Breaker Charge. There's all these ways to deal with the illusions. Even if they have like 2,000, 3,000 HP, I don't really foresee them being that big of a problem to kill in the fights. So it's mostly just taking good fights when the Morphling isn't there to blow you up. That is going to be the newbie's game plan for the next... I would say at so, least until next rush, probably for the next even 15, 20 minutes. That's going to require like Kaka, Ogre, and SD to all work together. Yep. Get that initial jump, let the Dagon pop do its work, let the Veil vale amplify up as much of the damage as they possibly can, and let Mugi just do his thing until the team fight begins. They don't have good vision around the map, though. Everyone's scared of dying to the Quap because if they push out solo, they're mostly all going to die to Quap, maybe not Puck, but. With the Spirit Breaker having the Shadow Blade, which I think is a very awesome pickup for Ben Rear, he actually can die if, if he's split pushing. So now they can eliminate anybody who's split pushing with this, this Shadow Blade pickup. Here comes VG once more, looking to push down mid. Puck Illusionary Ult's gonna slow down the push, but backdoor regeneration won't kick in thanks to that creep wave coming in range. There is no way that they could take this fight at the T2, maybe at the T3, but. Yeah, they're, they're not even trying. He still has Aegis and BKP, man. Oh, Paparazzi. He's the mad damage to SCCC, and he's trapped. You're set for up, one chance is available. Blink Dagger is not, however. Phase Shift, wait the timeout, and they bring him down. A huge kill. Luffy's Illusions come to the front line to try and stall it out. Now the top lane and the bottom lane is pushing in favor of Nubi. So this is their one advantage at this moment. So all they have to do is keep VG at bay. Push him away, Kaka will fire a strike. The multicast is unbelievable on the paparazzi. We've got a lot of mana burn time, charge, pushing all back with the silence. The buyback in from SCCC. He got almost everybody inside the dream call. The gun against done up, both Lanham as well as Young Eleven. And then four heroes alive for VG on the run. Blink Burrow available for Kaka. Where's the target? It's the dual target. They move forward onto Ori. Ori evaporates in a mana burn storm. Lanham and SCCC can just continue the battle a little bit further to the south. It's, yep, there we go. <laughs> Taking care of, and further in with the epicenter. Bring him down, bring him down. It still only counts as four. Morphling will go down and newbie. They make a beeline for the mid lane. What? They killed the Morphling through the Aegis easily at the start of the fight. 
It was the instant uh, stun. Like there was no reaction when Faith got that three-time multicast. Well, you could just you could just morph. It's just like boom, boom, boom. He, was, he doesn't even morph until super late. And then he doesn't pop his PKB. You know, that's then the overwhelming odds has like four heroes on it. Yep. I mean, but he he dies though at the very start, which is just really disastrous. They all have to back up after that. Mm -hmm. And then he burns the BKB to escape and still dies. Now, Queen of Pain as well as Morphling, they have buybacks available. Fenrir gonna charge himself forward with a Shadow Blade. Morphling oh does goodness. the buyback, so they, they get him to expend the money. They don't take a tier 3 tower, however. I actually cannot believe what just happened. They were down a puck, they had Aegis and yep. BKB on Morphling, and they yep. lost, like, everything. Yep. That is insane. How do you even escape? Like, it's like the puck was down, the fight started, and there was no reaction from VG Gaming. It's like Newbie getting caught out by the Winter's Curse in Game 2. VG got a five-man coil. Oh, Pip popped I... out a five-man five coil on VG. Yeah, it was five-man coil, five-man overwhelming odds. And, and then the four-man silence. I th there might have been Epicenter dumped in there, too, which was, which was crazy, but... Wow. That was almost inconceivable that they could ho hold it that well. I expect, uh, you know, with a puck buyback, maybe they can get like one or two kills, but mm -hmm. wiping the Morphling and the Queen of Pain, that is just some incredible coordination. And Vici, you know, they, as you mentioned, they made the same mistake that Newbie did last game, which is just clumped together as five or eight Wii spells. <laughs> yeah. Not a good thing, especially I, I, when SCT's been on such fire this entire tournament. The thing is, I can't really blame them, though. I, I can't really blame Newbie for that last game, too, because they were so far ahead. They were like 15, 20,000 ahead with Aegis and Cheese. They felt so confident being able to do that. And similarly with Vici, the Punk is down, and you have the Aegis in the BKB. So are you really worried about losing that fight? Smurgank KP! What? Bye. Get out of here! Get out of here! You're gone! Get wrecked! <laughs> that hesitation, though, from Vici. They mm. saw him, and then they're like, uh, who goes first? Who goes first? <laughs> How did he know to do that? Did he, did he, he have vision? He just finished the camp, I think. That was it. It was literally unintentional awesomeness. Sometimes it just happens like that. I, I also think that Vici hesitated. Like, if you see if you see him, you're not exactly sure who's behind him. Like, you're, you're, I don't know. There's that moment <laughs> of hesitation. Mm -hmm. I mean, who's actually going to jump them? They don't have like a blink stunner like the like the uh, same game. Oh, look at that disc! I, l I love the fact that okay, we're gonna watch it again. Yeah. So KP, he finishes one more creep to kill. It's like, bye, I'm gone. Oops. <laughs> they don't have a good initiator though. That's actually like, do you want to blink vacuum one hero? Probably not. As eleven, so that that makes their initiation a blink scream because it is instant, mm -hmm. instant uh, cast, which is. Honestly, it just sounds awful as an initiation, but I guess it's the it, it definitely is the right play there. You know, I'm just loving the fact that like this, this is you know, before we saw that replay again. So the level 20 talent for Puck, plus 40% illusionary ult distance as well as speed. Actually able to get this as opposed to like well, what I want 420. <laughs> okay, like that was that was a trade off before. Now it's so much better for these high maneuverable players to just get pickoffs. Lana caught napping instantly. Silence. I don't know if you really want to complete that TP, Paparazzi. The Tombstone is down for the moment. Fenrir charges through, but ships him the knife. They don't want to pass each other. Young Eleven cannot move in closer. Faith is keeping control from the back lines, and more support's coming in. The Dream Call is on Paparazzi, but the BKB will save him, and the E-Blade Pop will allow him to get a revenge kill into Faith, but the BKB is wearing off pretty soon. Varus trying forward. Kaka controls him. The Dwarf is off the battle and actually backs them up onto the high ground and leads it up to turn around with the Sonic Wave, but no! Two gone, KP will pop to the Sonic Wave. Illusionary Orb thinking about going back in, but Paparazzi, all he wanted to do was live. And VG, the rest of the, the, rest of the team was able to allow that to happen. Saving, saving grace of Young Eleven. Nice try on Morphling. They did pop his Lincoln, I believe, with what the fuels from the same thing? You, you've got like a, you've got enough fuels to do it, sure. But they don't have to damage. Because he has a ton of agility and a ton of armor. 41 armor. And mm -hmm. maybe yeah, with a puck dag on they could, but there's also the pipe that you have to worry about. So he's he's surprisingly tanky. I thought they I think they thought that it was a good idea because his BKB was down, but it's still right outside their T3. Great yeah. vacuum coming out. A lot of VG arriving and then 
New items will start to arrive. Kaka, this time it's his turn to get caught napping. Revenge is a dish best served. Well, if you can actually serve it, Kaka. Bar strike down. Spirit Break is losing mana. The multicast stuns won't be there, but glances forward at SDCC. Rifting and Dagoning almost at exactly the same time gives such a huge amount of pop damage as a level 4 Dagon with that rift. And the death of SP is making Newbie think they can go into Roshan. Paparazzi does not have buyback. He spent all of his money on the Scardi. Rightly so when his buyback is uh, still on cooldown for another three minutes. The Newbie are inside the pit. This time there's only two. Well, technically there's a lot of boogie, but there's only two in the pit. So I feel happy with this. Lanham caught with a dream call. Tombstone is down as quickly as he possibly can before he runs out of mana. Ori looking for his target back into a two-man wall. Caught out the SK as well as PL for a cup of illusion. But with the overwhelming odds, Lanham continuously stunned up, just runs forward with its undying ultimate up. Now SEC will finally put him down. Has that burst damage, but it's trade-off after trade-off around the pit. Playing from both sides, the tombstone will drop to the PL illusions. And the fight is still on. Watch that puck. Watch the birdie. Illusionary orb up a little bit further. And we're going in for Roshan. Buyback from the Ogre to try and secure this. He'll give the bump up required. And BG Gaming. There's no BKPs on BG's side. And they still have the epicenter up on the side of That's the where they linked his paparazzi. They're going to send him in. They're going to try and E-play pop somebody down. Face is going to be the easier target. But yo, you can't decide. He couldn't see Face. He lost the vision of it. And Moogie was the best one. Still lands up. The back won't get in drop much more. There's more Moogies arriving with the Sonic Wave damage from Ari. It's high. It's good. But they haven't got to yet. They do get the kill over on KP. Wave bound. The Sonic to SECC. He'll face shift up. The Blink Dagger. It's going to be a cooldown when he arrives. And he can't get out. Fenry at the damage was there! The SP will find it! And BG Gaming, they want Roshan! Mugi, he's chasing the back lines, looking for Ari. The BKB up, still the rest of BG, trying to complete up Roshan. They want this kill, Ari, they're gonna find it! SK will fall, and Ari walks away! Fenrir creates the space for the blink! Agassi model in the meantime was also snatched out by KP! So Diasite, they get the kill on Roshan! But KP has the Agassi model and the cheese! He took the whole kit! for that buyback. Wow. I think Morphling actually had the gem. Maybe he... I, I don't know what happened there inside the pit. I was watching the north side of the fight, but maybe some gem shenanigans over there. It's like, oh man, I don't really want to drop this. I'm, I, I I'm can't fairly swap certain it. We'll, have a, we'll have a high speed replay in just a second, but... Woo! Sometimes that happens when you have the gem. You try and put it in your backpack because you want to make room for the ages, and you're like, oh wait, I can't put that in my backpack. That might have happened to him uh, this, this fight. Still, SCC dies. Very difficult to phase shift out of the Ion Shell. I think that's what's happened to him maybe two or three times uh, in the, in these past fights. Mm -hmm. I think that, as well as a, maybe a uh, Spirit Breaker charge that's like passing through him as soon as the phase shift ends can yep. uh, stop him from doing that. But he has not had that get out of jail free phase shift blink combo that we've seen so many times from Pub. Yeah. Fenrir really has been on the money so hard. Yep. She also flagged the fact the cheese, as I think we just did with the Observer. It's been given over to the PL. So Moogie's going to have that extra life as he is has enough money for his full butterfly too. Now try and get a fight here, VG Gaming, with a five-man smoke invasion to the Radiant Jungle. But the rest of Moogie, they're headed north. I think he just screwed dueling Morphling. Like, it's <laughs> lost them two fights in a row. It, it's like they're trying to control him so they can burn the mana, that's it. Like, if you can just hold him and burn him. That's not worth it. <laughs> you well, just, just well, do what's the, what's the better target? You gotta go on the Lincoln's Queen of Pain? I mean, he has a lot of his armor, so he'd actually be a kill target. Either that or you just take the Undying. Yeah, you can just take a quick easy kill on Undying, that's probably where Parks here is yeah. gonna be pretty tough. The thing about it is they have Crimson Guard and Pipe, so as soon as someone gets dual, you just pop both of them, and they might not even die, no matter, even if it's the uh, nope. weakest person on your team. That's what happened to the Morphling when they fought him on the Tier 3 tower. Both Crimson Guard and Pine were triggered, and then space created by back wall. Yep. It's a problem. Morphling cannot be contained. I mean, may maybe you could get a Scepter or something, and then, like, just duel them and take out a fight. Maybe you could do that. Oh, let's, have a, let's have a look at this moment again. So this is the little battle on the northern side. But Ori just gets the blink away, thanks to the Solar Rift life of Lanham, the sacrificial man who dies. And KP snatch. Well played, well played, well played, well played. Yeah. KP, recent tournaments. He's, he's stolen so many Aegis in recent tournaments. 
Yes, he has. Ever since TI, he's just been watching that pit like a hawk. Okay, so now, Phantom Lance is getting pretty big. He has those two key items that you mentioned uh, before. Oh, charge. <laughs> it's, it's coming in an interesting angle. Obviously, he's able to trigger off the Shadow Blade and get a lot closer. SCCC, really good counter push when you've got that range on the Illusionary Orb. Makes it difficult for VG Gaming to get close without. Oh, Fenrir. No, 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 no. He doesn't want to go in that deep. He's caught the wrong side of the tree. They barely him up. Dust as well. They see a virus strike from Kaka. It's going to miss. Body cuts as well. There's a soul to give Fenrir more life. Kaka hiding in the sandstorm. The troops don't want help. MSCC jumps back in again for that pump damage. But Ori. BKBs from Paparazzi and Ori being burned. The Hex is there on the SK. SP's charging back into the fight. Switches the Tiger from the dead SK. To the KP, Legion Commander, but the fight continues forward. More and more Moogie, and more Moogie, and more Moogie when Young Eleven will take a copy of him as well. They're trying to get rid of the tombs, and able to do it inside the wall. Fenrir, then the charging into face, pushing him back. So much hits. Moogie is still so huge, and so is SECC in the back lines. He picked up Fenrir, another overwhelming on KP. Wants to continue with this fight, but so does VG. They'll bring him down. 92 seconds on the sideline. That's a buyback out from the end. From too many heroes who are ending up falling. Keep the fight going, however. There is still more Moogie where he came from. Back through the wall of Young Eleven. He wants to jump out of this one. Hasn't used a surge yet. Yules have dropped towards the air. He just has enough man to do it, but Moogie keeps the Phantom Rush going. It comes back off cooldown. He'll have the movement speed. No, he actually burnt the Phantom Rush to start with. Now the lands is forward. All forward. SCCC. Just such high maneuverability on these players. Now bring down four of VG. They repel them for the moment. The buyback cost was actually from the Spirit Breaker. None of it came out from Ruby. It was just a long death time on Legion Commander because he did a long time before. Yeah, that's incredible damage coming off of McCord. It's very rare to see a punk do that much in a team fight. Just dag on after dag on after dag on. So it's like, how does he have the mana for all of this? They didn't fall into the trap of committing all in for Fenrir, though. It could have been really bad if they got backing up into the high ground where the tombstone is, and none of them actually fall into that trap. So. Props to Newbie for that, and then Paparazzi goes in deep. This Hex, he tries to press attack it off, but, you know, can't be dispelled anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and then the BKBs wear off. They're all stuck in the Dream Coil. They actually focused KP early on, though. Maybe they kind of, you know, slipped their mind that he still had the Aegis, but they go pretty mm -hmm. hard on him at, at this point in time. And he is the squishiest target uh, of the three cores. And Faith just kind of dies in the, <laughs> in the mass amount of AoE, but... Then you have these two very, very large cores doing tons of damage and not yeah. that great of damage on, uh, to deal with this PL. And he gets mana burned so quickly. Right? I can't actually believe that Quap dies because he runs out of mana and he loses the gem. <laughs> and that's going to continue. That crit talent is so good. 30% crit. That's a talent. And crit does transfer to his illusions. The two times attack and... Then he's going to amplify it more once he has the blood bond attack. Comes out, that's a big kill. SCCC put down by a quick gank from VG Gaming underneath their own Observer and Sentry. Yep, I mean, it's just something as simple as a Shadow Blade and a Spear Breaker. You cannot uh, dodge that mm -hmm. at all if you don't have detection. And he doesn't have a Lincolns either, so... Not yet, but he's got 420 kicking in, so... Octarine, he has the money for it. Yeah, he thinks he needs to do more damage, which... Octarine will give him a much larger mana pool, yep. as well as uh, he doesn't really need the spell life so so much. I think it's more for the cooldown reduction and the mana pool, so that he can just keep dumping spell after spell after spell. Mm -hmm. You imagine if he gets a pump off more spells in that last fight. Oh, the jump in! The tool is there! And this time they go on the target we were talking about. Pick off the Undying, and then Moogie moves forward. Fenrir! Woohoo! That's a lot of damage on to him. Young Eleven trying to help out both Pipe and Crimson Guards being popped. Fenrir is dying to Moogie. It's taking a little bit too long, however. And this allows Paparazzi to get into the back lines going on Kaka, but there's just so much. Moogie, the gems are on the deck. They're looking to pick it back up again. Moogie, he's still got this cheese available, so he wants to fight and KP's got duel in 21 seconds. That's an interesting smoke from PG. <laughs> Up on the hill. Waiting for someone to run in or they're looking to run out. Their tier 3 towers taking damage to the bottom. They burn fortification for this because that's a decent lineup. Double catapults, some good range creeps. The tier 3 towers out of 400, 300, 200, 141. And catapult switch targets. 89. It's on. This uh, Queen of Pain, Fear, 
Ice on the screen is actually going to be a problem for those uh, illusions. At least he has the uh, Phantom Rush talent, the level 20 talent from the Phantom Lancer. Plus so, he, so he can range. get him back in quickly. Yep. Uh, that's pretty important for him. I mean, the screen is such a low cooldown. And they have the Mjolnir, they're going for a Shiva's next, just to deal with all these illusions. We saw how quickly it almost killed the uh, Spirit Breaker before that Crimson Guard came out. Too early for Roshan. Gonna wait 25 more seconds and he'll be back in the, into the world of living. But don't worry, Puck is like uh, about a quarter of the way of the map away from Roshan. Still able to scout with that illusionary orb. Without risking himself and PL illusions. And orb again, killing off the Morphling. Illusion. Can you hover over Puck's Q spell and tell me what it says? Over. It's not illusionary, Toby. Illusionary. Yes. It is, it is not illusion. All right, illusionary. his orb. His orb. His orb. All right. I got. Sorry, I got triggered after. That's like, like it's like his time. Abba. It's Abba and orb. Abba and orb. <laughs> there you go. Here they come. There goes your orb in towards the pit. They are the dream call. Catching three. Instant Crimson Guards are up. They start spamming out the illusion to get rid of that man on the back line. But no! Fenrir, the trouble is out with the epicenter. Lacquer and all of base. It dodges only double gang of dodges the Sonic Wave. Trouble and BT land. Three heroes down. All they got in return was the SK. Huge plays right now from Mubi. They're after Young Eleven and they got him. But maybe get more. Paparazzi, he's on the run with the waveform. Four heroes down from VG. That is. Nubi can go for Roshan and just capitalize on the moment. That has to be one of the most unluckiest Roche batches I have ever seen. <gasps> ever. Oh my goodness. Fenrir was about to go in and just get the bash. All ten heroes are just staring at the stunned Spirit Breaker. <laughs> and then the fight just erupts. Oh my goodness. That, it was also so far out of the pit. It was like almost... It was like around the rune area. That's how far <laughs> Roshan was. You know, we need to give a tribute to the unsung heroes of this grand final. Are you kidding me? It is the me? neutrals. It's first the centaur and it's second Roshan. That was unbelievable. What? <laughs> of all the times. Oh, if it were in the pit, you know, that's something, that's something else. But out, that far outside the pit. Oh, time to get tilted. Tier 3 towers, newbie. They bring down the mid, they can rotate top already with the jump in from SCC, bringing Paparazzi down a little bit further. They trigger the Lincoln Spear on him and these Lancers. They're in the back line, they're creating so many issues, you can't even move forward. They're back to get rid of him. Oh, no! Oh, you poor bastards! They're gonna kill him off! The duel is up with the blade mail as well. PL is in the mid, they're gonna bring down the ball back to Octia. Everything is escalating quickly. Ori's trying to do what he can. KP wants to control him, but SEC, he'll rejoin the fight he's picking off the heroes all on the sides there goes your support three heroes from bg down ori wants to do more paparazzi the man who's meant to be unkillable is locked in with a dream call a forest strike forward queen of pain will fall and with the host of bg gaming four heroes down for so long this has to be good game Nubia are pushing the tier four towers they know this is so firmly in the bag that newbie they have to be winning it now there's the gg call Newbie has done it. A clean sweep. 3-0 in the grand final against BG Gaming. If there was any question whether or not FTC was one of the best mids in the game, this series should dispel all doubt. How he brought them back from the treasures with that mid mid fight. And, you know, basic one of the best lessons that you should take away from the series, don't clump up when pushing the T3. We have seen so many teams fall to that basic principle, and it it is something that should stick with you. And oh my goodness, Roshan, I, I kind of wish we saw the replay so I could drop my jaw once again. Uh, you didn't get to get, have it because Nubi, they were too quick after having that fight around Roshan, but that's going to be a moment that stings in the mind of VG Gaming. But so will this entire series. Nubi really coming in, playing strong. They stuck with their same opening. They had the gyro in the first phase for the for game one and game two. Ogre was just time and time again, just so fantastic. Everything worked. The draft was solid. TI, they had hiccups when they hit the grand final, but now, newbie, they claim the victory of the perfect world masters.